So do you guys remember, I think it was earlier in the year, we did the Polymer 80 10 millimeter build. And then after that, we did a Polymer 80 45 ACP build. And since the time that I uploaded those videos, I've been watching the comments on those videos to see what kind of questions people are asking. And everybody unanimously seems to want a comparison between 45 ACP and 10 millimeter and which one I prefer and what are the pros and cons to both. <laughs> since then, I've been really testing the 10 millimeter slide as well as the 45 ACP slide. And I've been running them on the same exact polymer 80 frame with all stock internals. Surprisingly, knowing me, I usually customize them, but I really wanted to get a good feel for what they're like so that I can convey that information to you guys reliably. So the first build that we did was the Glock 20 in 10 millimeter. The Glock 20 feels just like a higher powered nine millimeter to me. I expected it to have a lot more recoil than it did, but I was actually surprisingly able to shoot this gun at relatively rapid rates. I'm not a performance shooter or anything, but I can do some double taps and triple taps typically with my standard nine. So with this one, I was trying that as well. It felt weird at first, but in a good way. It felt like, wow, I really feel like this thing is really thumping to steel, but at the same time, it felt way more controlled than I originally anticipated. I didn't have any types of issues with it, you know, failing to feed or jamming up on me. The coolest part is it is a 14 plus one round magazine capacity, which is only one round less than my Glock 19s that I typically carry. However, with these, yes, it is a full-sized gun, so therefore for, yeah, it's, you're actually three rounds down from the standard Glock 17, which is, this is about the same size of, but the difference is, it's a, it's a lot thicker and beefier, especially in the slide area. Now, one thing I noticed was I don't have a, an OEM full-size frame here to show you, but I did hold one a couple times and they were actually kind of difficult to get my hand around. And I noticed with the Polymer 80s, they might be ever so slightly larger than their standard Glock 17s and Glock 34 frames, but they feel almost identical to one another. And I thought that was very interesting because I expected this frame to be really big and clunky, but it just turns out, yes, it's slightly bigger, but not big enough to make me feel uncomfortable. After I did that video, I was like really impressed. I was like, dude, I could carry this and feel 100% comfortable. But I was like, man, I really want to compare it to the 45 ACP. I, the only 45 ACP I've owned before this is my 1911 that's back there, the 80% one we built a while back. If you want to watch that build series, I'll link it in the description below. And I'll also link up where you can find all this stuff. List. That way, if you want to pick some up or check the prices, you can. So then I got the 45 ACP. Externally, dimensions are all the same. The main difference between these two is the barrel's size. And we'll talk more about that because there's a couple things you need to know about it. Now with this one, I didn't know what to expect. I'd never really fired a polymer framed 45 ACP before. And I will say I didn't enjoy the 45 ACP as much as I did with the 10 millimeter. The 45 ACP, I felt like just pushed back way too much relative to the amount of firepower that you get when you pull the trigger. And what I mean by that is muzzle energy in feet per second. With 45 ACP, your standard 230 grain ammo travels at about 830 feet per second, which equates to 355 foot pounds of muzzle energy. You know, that's pretty decent. However, most 200 grain 10 millimeter ammo fires at approximately 1200 feet per second and produces 759 foot pounds of muzzle energy. Almost double the muzzle energy with only 30 grains less. This can vary widely based on what types of ammunition that you pick up. There are so many different ones. Um, some of the best 10 millimeter that I've, I've seen so far is from Lehigh Defense. I mean, they just like to make really powerful ammo. But what I mainly gathered from that was number one, I liked the recoil impulse of 10 millimeter better. It shoots flatter. It doesn't push you back as hard, but at the same time, you're getting more muzzle energy, which is actually going to do a little bit more damage on the target that you're shooting. And so for me, that was kind of like, well, 
I like to shoot kind of quick. I like to, you know, do some rapid fire at times. And with the 45 ACP, although it's possible, it's a lot easier with 10 millimeter, especially if you're shooting 180 grain. Now 180 grain, 10 millimeter, obviously isn't gonna pr produce the types of muzzle velocity that the 200 grain produces. However, I just like that a lot better. Plus with the 10 millimeter, I can hold 14 rounds. And with the 45 ACP, I can only hold 13 rounds. So I get extra rounds, more muzzle energy and higher velocities. What's not to love? Now in regards of reliability, both of them have ran 100% great. Granted, I am using all OEM parts. The only thing that is not OEM on these builds is the frame itself. Now, I do, I do plan on modifying these, but I'll be really honest, it is really tough to find custom mods for these large frame Glocks. Small frame Glocks, tons of mods. These, not so much. But we'll definitely have to do a customization series on both of them, just to see which one we can make better. Now, what are the differences between the slides and the barrels and the recoil springs. But the barrels are dramatically different and there is one little difference on the slide that might determine whether, which one you go with. As an example, if you take a 45 ACP barrel and put it into the 10 millimeter, it actually will not fit because the barrel hood is a different width right up here at the top. So therefore you can't convert a 10 millimeter to 45 ACP, nor are there any conversion barrels for the 10 millimeter to shoot 45. However, you can convert your 45 to a 10 millimeter. Now this isn't a conversion barrel, but just to kind of give you an idea, they do 100% fit. There is a little bit of gap on each side, which is why you'd probably want to get the conversion barrel. I'm not going to try to shoot it because you know, the pressures could not be good, but I am going to try to get my hands on a conversion barrel just to see what that's like. Aside from the slides having their hoods cut in a different diameter, they seem to be almost identical in every single way. Um, here's their guide rod springs. I can't tell if one of these is stronger than the other. They feel about the same, but I'll have to double check that because I forgot to, but I'll annotate that on the screen if they're the same or not. So if you're the kind of person that wants to fiddle around with multiple calibers, then you probably want to get the 45 ACP slide kit. That way you can just interchange barrels. You can put 357 in here. You can put 10 millimeter in here. They got conversion barrels for a lot more than just those. I just, they're usually like calibers I never shoot. So I can't really think of them. So the 45 ACP, if you're going to do caliber conversions is probably going to be the better deal than just getting the 10 millimeter by itself. Because if you get the 10 millimeter, I couldn't really find any conversion barrels for anything. And so, you know, that's kind of disappointing. So what about mods and accessories that you can get for these guns? Because earlier I did mention that they're kind of hard to find and they really are. The only people that I've really seen that make aftermarket parts for the 10 millimeter in regards to barrels is Lone Wolf. I mean, that's basically the only people I've seen that make them. I'm not against Lone Wolf in any way. However, in the past, I have had a lot of bad luck with their internal parts kits for Glocks. And not only myself, but about four or five other people on the channel who have actually contacted me or people I've known have had issues, you know, getting their polymer 80s to function. And every single time it comes down to the parts that are used, which just so happened to come from Lone Wolf. Now, a while back, I made a video about stupid cheap Glock 34 build. And in that video, I was talking about um, a company called Dasan USA who make a lot of parts for a lot of different brands. Now in that video, I'd, I may have accidentally miscommunicated what my point of it was, but Dasan basically has two different manufacturing plants. One is here in the United States and then one is over here in South Korea. In that video, the reason I was bringing that up was someone who I know who wants to remain anonymous had picked up a Glock slide for them to mill and sell to their customers. Something about it felt off to them. So they decided to do a hardness test. Now Glock slides are supposed to have a Rockwell hardness between 40 and 50. And this one, I think it had a Rockwell hardness of like 11 or something like that. I'd, I'd have to go look at the, the old text message, but anywho, way below spec. And it turns out he was able to look at it, had some proof marks on it and it came from the Seoul, Korea manufacturer. And so a lot of people accidentally miscommunicated saying, don't get anything from Dasan. I was just saying, make sure the one that you get is from the United States and not from the Korean plant because of that incident. And you know, a lot of companies like Palmetto State Armory use Dasan, STI International uses Dasan USA as well. That's not knock on the company, it's just manufacturing standards are different from Korea than they are from the United States. And when people go to them wanting to get products, sometimes depending on their budget, they might choose to order from the Korean manufacturing plant. I say all that to say this, the only issues I've ever had with Lone Wolf parts have been on their internals. I really haven't tried anything else from them. 
So I can't tell you yay or nay on whether or not the barrels are good, but hopefully we can find out in the very near future. And I'll throw some links down below as well. That way, if you wanna look for some and price them out, they'll be there for you. In regards to triggers, there are quite a few different trigger companies. I don't remember all of them off the top of my head, but I'll include them in the build list. I believe Agency Arms has triggers for them and their triggers are pretty good. And I think SSVI has triggers for them and there's a couple of more, but triggers are definitely a go. Now, in regards to aftermarket slides, the only people I've been able to find is Lone Wolf. And when you go to their site looking at their slides, they're usually out of stock. The only one that I can really find in stock is a blank slide. And so if you decided to do a build using the blank slide, you then have to go send it out to have it milled because a blank slide is 100% a square block. You know, someone needs to put some profiles on it. Someone needs to drill the holes for the sights, all that stuff. That's gonna cost you a couple hundred dollars to get that done. Then you gotta get the internals in the barrel. And then once you start doing it like that, it just really starts adding up. Now, in regards to having your OEM slides milled, I do know of a company that mills the large frame Glock slides and his prices are very reasonable. And I don't have any affiliate stuff with him. I don't get any kickbacks if you guys go to him. It's just something he provided for you guys. And so that'll be in the build list as well if you're interested in getting slide work done. So what does it cost to actually build these things? Well, it's gonna cost approximately $80 more to build it versus buying it. And at that point, you're probably like, well, why would I do that? I kind of asked myself that same question. Main reason you probably wanna build it over buy it is the grip is definitely way better than the OEM large frame Glock grips in a couple of different ways. Um, first off, it's textured way better. It's a lot easier to hang on to it with these polymer 80 frames than it is with the OEM Glock texturing. The other thing that I liked about it is you now have a full Picatinny rail instead of just the Glock OEM rail. So now your options for lights is opened up a whole lot. The next reason is you have accelerator cuts up here and you have a double undercutted trigger guard, which is more ergonomic and easier to shoot under recoil. And probably the last reason is the grip angle. A lot of people don't like the hump that Glock has. They have the 1911 grip angle with them. As an example, if you went out and purchased a brand new Glock 20, OEM, you're gonna spend about $579, just kind of depending on where you get it. You might find it cheaper, it might be more expensive. If you wanted to add a polymer 80 frame to that, it's gonna cost you about $149. And that, and that would total up to about $728 if you wanted to buy the full gun and then you wanted to actually go out and add the polymer 80 frame later. Whereas if you wanted to just buy the full kit for these, it cost about 660 ish dollars, somewhere in that range. And I think I have a promo code. I don't remember what the promo code's for. It's either five or 10% off, but that'll take some money off if you wanna get them. But thankfully guys, I've been doing a lot of research and I have a way more affordable option for you. Basically, I've figured out how to source the parts in a way where you can actually get the complete Glock 21 and then get the Polymer 80 frame as well. And it comes out to be a way cheaper than just buying the Polymer 80 kit. Now, this is only if you wanna buy the full gun, like it's FFL type stuff. It's gotta be transferred to you for the actual gun. It'll be in the build list. I'll have multiple options where if you wanna just get the frame or if you wanna just get the slide kit, stuff like that. But overall, they work really great. But in regards to shooting it, I definitely prefer the 10 millimeter. However, I like the fact that you get a lot of versatility with the 45 ACP slide if you wanna do caliber conversion. So it really comes down to personal preference. So let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Maybe there was something I didn't cover. But until next time, guys, I love you. You guys stay sexy.